Hello everyone, my name is Rick, Rick van Bruggen from Neo Technology, and after a quite a long pause after Graph Connect Europe, here I am again recording another uh, 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 podcast episode, and uh, today I'm joined by someone that I've been looking forward to speaking to for quite some time, um, Aaron Wallace from Pitney Bowes. Hi Aaron. Hello, Rick. How are you doing today? Doing really well. Thank you for joining uh, joining us. And you know, it's uh, it's been a bit of a <laughs> bit of an exercise in planning to get both of us on the phone, but here we are. Um, Alan, would you mind introducing yourself to our uh, to our podcast listeners? Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Aaron Wallace. I am a product manager uh, with Pitney Bowes, uh, specifically within our customer information management line of business, where we. Uh, sort of offer a product uh, to solve uh, broader problems for information management, master data management, uh, data quality, amongst a number of other uh, use cases for our customers. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, Pitney Bowes to me was one of, one of those hidden gems of uh, American industry, I suppose. Uh, you guys do <laughs> lots and lots and lots of uh, cool stuff, but most people might know 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 uh, Pitney Bowes from a specific type of product, right? The uh, the postage machines, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's certainly where our history is. You know, it's uh, close to a hundred-year-old uh, company. Yeah. Uh, certainly has its roots in mailing and uh, postal solutions, but a pretty large software division that's really grown up uh, over the last fifteen or twenty years, I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I, I've seen some of your 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 work, and also, uh, you know, what you guys do with uh, neo 4 j and it's pretty pretty cool stuff. So, um, would you mind uh, telling us a little bit about how you got into that, Aaron? How did you guys get into the wonderful worlds of graphs. Sure, yeah. Um, it really kind of all relates back to um, our uh, decision to enter the master data management market, which goes back about uh, probably about six or seven years ago, something uh, in that range. Um, you know, we, we certainly became aware uh, of a trend as kind of a, a company that had been offering solutions around data quality primarily uh, in the initial kind of years of uh, selling our platform spectrum. Um, we decided, you know, uh, at, at that point to, to, that we needed to get into the master data management market because really what you see is a trend where folks really want uh, single solutions, single platforms, or at least uh, solutions from one vendor to solve kind of the broader range of information management use cases. So when we made that decision, we looked at the market, we looked at a lot of the existing uh, competitors uh, out there. We listened to a lot of, um, you know, our, our customers and prospective customers and certainly heard a very consistent theme as it related to, um, you know, some of the issues related to kind of the waterfall methodologies that get employed in a lot of MDM projects. So we decided, you know, being a new uh, entrant in the market um, that we really needed uh, an opportunity to kind of do something a little bit different, a little differentiated. So that's when we started really looking at graph and the application uh, it could provide uh, for solving master data management use cases and really how it could uh, address some of these pain points related to uh, agility um, that we feel are, are really kind of tied a lot to uh, the way many existing solutions um, lean very heavily on relational technologies and uh, almost canned models for uh, you know solving problems for, for their customers. And just hear a lot about very extended timelines and very large budgets. Um, and in the end, uh, you know, solutions that don't necessarily meet the requirements of the, of the business users. So we kind of related that back you know, in many ways to a fundamental issue with agility uh, and, and managing, um, uh, you know, repositories for master data. So that was kind of, uh, you know, what led us to Graph and then ultimately what, what led us to Neo as a, as a, you know, a key piece of our solution. Yeah, that's really, really cool. And, and you know, it's been part of, Neo4j has been part of, of the Spectrum product for a couple of years now, right? I mean, you guys have been deploying it uh, at, at quite a few uh, interesting customers, right? Yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, kind of uh, several customers as the product has grown up, and we've really uh, gained a lot of traction out there in the marketplace. A number of customers that are doing uh, very interesting things, uh, solving problems across different verticals, financial services, uh, retail, uh, OEM type models. Um, really, again, uh, solving those kind of issues, you know, dealing with uh, multiple data sources. Many times when you look at uh, information management or master data management in the enterprise, you're talking about uh, you know, hundreds of different data sources that need to be combined uh, to drive, you know, 360 degree views or multi-dimensional views uh, of your customers. So, uh, you know, other aspect of it that, that really fits well in terms of graph is the is the business user focused modeling paradigm uh, 
uh, that we're able to really leverage as we get spun up in these projects with our customers. Um, really being able to to, to kind of you know bind together the IT side of the house and the business side of the house as the initial models and, and requirements are developed. Um, we find that the you know the whiteboard style modeling that Graph is really is really great for. Um, really lends itself well to to getting these things off the ground quickly and and delivering value back to your customers very quickly. Yeah. Well, you know, normally I ask people, you know, why did you get into graphs? But I think you've already answered it, right? You know, <laughs> it's, it's it's all about flexibility, the agility, the modeling, right? Those are those are the three main main themes, I say. Yeah, I certainly. Uh, and and you know, as you know, um, highly connected data is is a very much kind of the sweet spot uh, for graph when you want to understand relationships, and I think. Uh, the importance of that is becoming just um, more and more evident as it comes to to managing customer information and, and really managing the customer experience as a business. Um, as you have data sources uh, like social, like mobile, um, like you know some of the sensor data that we're looking at now with Internet of Things, uh, really kind of coming to the front as another element of a multi-dimensional view. Uh, that's another area where it's really great at um, you know modeling that and also performance, as you know. Um, uh, if you want to do a uh, friends of friends of friends type query uh, in a relational system that can uh, uh, get really complicated really quickly, it can also break down at scale very quickly. So that was another uh, key aspect for us as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, absolutely. So um, you know, when, when, when is this product that you guys have developed, you know, Spectrum, is that something that is specific to a particular vertical or is this something that you use in all kinds of different... Uh, um, yeah, no, not specific to uh, any one vertical. We certainly have um, uh, verticals uh, that we focus on, um, you know, from a go-to-market perspective, um, but it's applicable across a number of verticals. I would say the biggest one for us these days uh, relates to uh, financial services and insurance. Um, you know, financial crimes and compliance is a big area for us as well. So, you know, another um, another area for the graph, as you know, also is, is fraud detection. So we're working with a couple of key customers right now to build models uh, for you know advanced detection of these kind of events and activity within a network uh, to really kind of get out front of some of these regulatory requirements which we as we know uh, from everything we see in the news uh, can be a really big deal for a lot of these organizations so uh, I, can, I can tell you you know ever since the panama papers broke uh, we've been uh, talking to a lot of people about using the graph for uh, fraud detection it's uh, it's been a very yeah. active conversation Yep. Very good. Um, so, so where do you think this is going, Aaron? You know, where, where, where? What's, what does the future hold? You know, for both for the the graph industry, I, I would say, and for for Pitney Bowes and Spectrum. You know, where where is this going? You think? Yeah. So I see a number of um, you know really really interesting applications for us. Um, you know, some things we've done in recent releases and and things we're going to be working on. Uh, going forward, you know, again, in the general area of our marketplace. I mean, one thing we've done recently uh, is kind of a mashup of of what we've done with NEO in terms of the graph along with a a federated virtualized uh, engine we can provide to support uh, more of what's, you know, kind of a a typical registry or hybridized pattern in MDM where you don't necessarily need to store uh, all your data centrally um, within the repository, but rather you can kind of uh, store pointers on certain nodes and, and effectively design uh, virtualized uh, nodes and, and entities and also virtualized relationships between those things. So that we're really excited about that. Um, I think that's just another uh, aspect of enabling that kind of agility. You can start with a smaller piece of uh, set of data that you're mastering centrally and maybe kind of reach out in that registry pattern uh, for other things. Um, metadata uh, at the enterprise level is probably the other key thing I would highlight from our perspective. We're really uh, in many ways, uh, you know, even as we see competitors starting to catch on a little bit to the message we've had out there for a while, uh, we're kind of doubling down on a lot of the the stuff we're doing around graph, in particular, looking at uh, areas like uh, enterprise metadata management and, and managing uh, and querying unstructured uh, data as well. I, I, you know, you alluded to the Panama Papers there. Um, we've tracked that very closely and have actually built uh, some pretty interesting demonstrations using our product. Uh, that deal with the unstructured aspects as well as uh, kind of the graph uh, visualization and query aspects. Um, so we're excited about uh, about some of that as well. Super cool. Well, you know, I think uh, we'll put some more links to uh, Spectrum and to Pity Bows on the uh, on the transcription website, right, of the of the pod, of the podcast, so um, so people can find more information uh, as easily as possible. I want to thank you for coming online, Aaron. It's been great talking to you. Uh, we want to keep these uh, podcasts fairly short, so we've covered a lot of ground very quickly. 
but thanks a lot, and uh, I hope uh, we get a chance to meet uh, face to face at some point. All right, Rick. Thanks a lot. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.